Alrighty, let's get this thing underway. <laughs> G'day, Stu from UOV Futures here, and welcome to the FPV Mix, the live stream where we just get together, talk about all things FPV, drone-related, and just generally have a good time. But first things first, what we need to do, I need to know, can you guys hear me, the sound quality, all that sort of stuff. So I want to try and get this sorted up, sorted because uh, one of the worst things you can do is start your stream, and then, I, and then you think, oh, wait, nobody can hear me. So uh, I don't know, let's check some of these, see if some of the comments are coming through, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to move this window down. And you've got to forgive me because I'm a little bit new to live streams as well. So we did one last week. It was a heap of fun, and we're just stuck indoors. So, uh, yeah, just uh, bear with me as I fumble my way through here, make some mistakes, and hopefully just do some learning and engaging with you guys. And if you've got any questions, fire away. We'll uh, give people a few minutes to load in here, and then we'll kick it off. All right, lots of people so they can hear it. Sounds great, all that sort of stuff. Today's episode, I thought it might be fun. Uh, we briefly touched on it in the last episode of the live stream we did, but what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some really old school videos and some old school tech and have a look at where pilots have come from to where we've got up to today because it wasn't until we watched a few of my old videos last time when you, I thought, man, is that what my flying used to be like? And I got a lot of emails back from you guys where they said it was uh, encouraging to see they often look at a lot of the top pro pilots, and I'm not saying I'm a, a pro pilot, but when you see some people flying and think, man, how am I ever going to fly like that? Like, are these people just born with it or what's the deal? And when, you know, we can have a look at some of the old school videos and you see me wobbling around, fumbling and learning. So that's what we're going to be uh, having a check, having a look at today. All right. This Lenny Kuis, uh Lewis Kenny. Uh, can you give me a shout out, please? I have my friends watching. So absolutely not, Lewis. Uh, I'm not definitely not going to give you a shout out there. Uh, are you going to do any builds coming up? Uh, possibly. We'll just have to see. We've got some builds coming up as well. So, uh, But I don't know if they're going to be. A lot of people always ask about the $99 build. You guys just got to still um, hang, hang on for that one. It's still, still a little while off. A little, little bit of a, a spoiler alert. Radio. Did you blow dry your hair? You know what? <laughs> I this was a terrible time uh, to miss getting a haircut. We can't even go outside now. It makes it really tricky for me. I don't know what's it like where you guys are, but I can't even go outside to go flying. We are allowed out for it's, it feels like we're in prison or something actually, like a complete lockdown. We can do a, there's four reasons you can leave your house. You can go for a walk around the block, you can go get food uh, or supplies, you can go to medical um, examinations and checkups and all that sort of stuff. And I can't remember what the fourth fourth one was maybe that was for i don't know but yeah we're pretty much stuck inside it makes it really tricky to definitely do some drone flying work anyway so radio let's have a look first things first what i want to do we're going to jump in and have a look at one of my very very old videos your videos oh josh joshua bardwell's jumped in here with my first uh Whatever. What, what do you call these things? A yellow super chat. Oh, thanks, Josh. How dare you start your stream while I'm streaming? This means war. Okay, let me Google how to do that. Do you do a live stream, Joshua Bardwell? Oh, there we go. Well, I learned something today. No, I'm just joking. You got, you got the best live streams, but uh, you got some fantastic Q&As. But I think we both know we ripped those off from Trevor because the original grumpy man himself, he was the, uh, the original Q&A. What what would happen to uh, this if you watch my stream, I watch your stream, and then, I don't know. Anyway, uh, nothing but love for Barbwell. I'm a big fan of his. I learn something from him all the time watching his videos. Right here, oh, I'm getting a lot of uh, a lot of things pinging up. Hey, you over futures, been a fan since day one. This is from Quicksilver. Um, I'm a paramedic in the United States, and lockdown has been pretty challenging. Yeah, in the US, it looks absolutely crazy. You see it on the news all the time, and you know, nothing but uh, just prayers. I don't, I don't know what we can what we can do but yeah it seems uh very very scary i got a lot of friends over there in the u.s as well and mainly from the fpv community and it's i don't know i'm kind of kind of getting a little bit worried for him especially like old man russ uh he is old and he does he does smoke and i'm worried about him so i definitely don't want him catching the virus or anything like that radio let's have a look at some of these old school videos we're going to jump over i'm going to see if this blows my computer up when i click on some of these buttons here we go. So we're sort by oldest first. <clears throat> Check some of these ancient dinosaur videos out. This is um, 
back right back in the day we're not going to jump in and have a look at this very first one because we had a look at that last week but here we go this one was this, look how i used to title my videos too back before uh some people would say this i'm sure some people will say this title is too clickbaity check this out we've got a fantastic domino's ad we can hopefully skip here get your pizza in here double ads <laughs> but look at this and i'm going to keep the music off too because i'm pretty sure i would get a copyright strike but Two, 250 mini quad three weeks in so this bad boy look how wobbly this sort of stuff was so this was probably about three weeks of flying and i was like yeah this flight i absolutely nailed it sitting on the ground like a peasant beautiful sunset though. i've got to say the original mobula Mo mobulus what does anyone remember what those cameras were called so yeah flying this thing around i thought this was the coolest little park to fly around as well and quads back in the day were so so wobbly the tune was disgusting look at that dodgy quality as well that's probably about as good as the camera used to come you used to mount your cameras flat on the craft got a bit of a spoiler here too i can't well talk about this uh sexy looking beast in a little bit but yeah you'd have your, your drone camera flat on the front no one thought about tilting their cameras or anything like that and I'm going to answer some of these questions, but this is playing in the background. Stu, uh, where in US are you based? Watching from NZ. So we're in Victoria, so just a little bit south of Melbourne. So you guys probably have better weather weather than us. Uh, Stu, um, lots of corona questions here. Let's try and get some drone questions go. Uh, Challenge accepted is asking, hi, Stu, I built your $100 V2 build and had to use Bardwell's help to finish it. Fantastic, uh, that's good, that's what it's all about, getting the community to work together. Uh, hey, I was just watching Josh, you told me you're here, hey, <laughs> from Tassie. I think Josh has been streaming uh, his for a little while, I don't know what his time, what time his starts. Some other people jumping in. It's so painful watching this, I hope you're talking about this video we're watching in the background, not uh, not my stream, but <laughs> we'll uh, suffer our way through it. Oh man, lots of lots of comments. Stu, I bought the B flight after watching this, and I just and I lost the camera screw just like you did. Which screw did you use to replace it? Ah, uh, the B flight. That was about two years ago, and I don't actually. We're gonna push. Look at look at my fantastic landing there, using the old school Tyrannus, sitting in the park like a hobo in the. I'm surprised you didn't get arrested or jumped on by police uh, with this sort of stuff. So we're gonna push stop there. And magical editing skills where you just simply, let's jump back over to this. The good old editing days of like, you just do a flight, you don't even come home and put it in the editor and then you just go straight to upload. So I don't know, that was the 250 mini quad three weeks in and that was the Emacs Hawk. And you've got to give a shout out to Emacs. I'll show you what frame I had as well uh, in a second. Let me just Google this, Emacs Nighthawk. 250 and you think your frames are complex to put together check these back oh they look so bad ebay 50 bucks delivered no thank you let's have a let's have a look at this one 650 dollars for the emacs pro it was a 280 actually okay free air mail to australia and i want you to think about this is the sort of think about what drones you guys have now and then what check this out this bad boy this is what we used to fly like in 2015 2014 these things look at that look at these motors i don't know if we can zoom in here look how we used to mount the cameras can we get a close-up of this picture that was it that's pretty much what we were flying around with we'd uh put the camera in the front and lo and behold we didn't even put any angle on there and i can remember when i first got mine i used to file out some of these top top little parts here because so i could put some extra camera camera tilt on but these used to be super bad but we love them look at the antennas hanging out the back there because we all know that looks really durable right yeah what what country does Stu live in uh we live in this in I almost said america we live in australia uh let's answer some of your questions while we're looking at these beautiful quads on the screen as well let's click i want to click on this picture here it's probably one of the better ones to look at uh i ran my dishes twice i don't know what that's about aka the flying brick with a camera yep uh funny funny thing on the back just here i on my original 250 or 280 nighthawk i thought i wanted to put some leds so i saw there's the camera here so i soldered them all in and i had two stainless steel standoffs that must have been about 
felt like 20, 20 grams each. They were definitely very heavy. And then I had like all this LED wire wrapped between them. I don't know what I was thinking. It just, it looked cool. And then you just weighed your quad down with so much unnecessary garbage. Look at that antenna. That's that's definitely just asking for asking to break. But this is, if anybody is interested, three hundred and sixty US dollars shipped, and it will ship to Australia in two to five business days, and we should have it by the end of the month. These motors, too, original, they look like Emacs. I can't even remember the name of those motors. Oh, we've got more pictures. Give me a close up. Ah, oh, and look at this. We used to cram all our components in the middle in a board like this, and use that to sandwich the arm, which is probably one of the dumbest things uh, we ever used to do because as soon you'd have a crash it would flex the board and you get all these little stress fractures and stuff like that but we didn't know better when we were uh, first doing our hobby anyway back to uh back to some of your questions Stu's in vic yes use as much aussie slang throughout the stream yeah she'll be right mate <laughs> Alrighty, yo. my first quad, this is from Night Train FPV. My first quad, let's have a look. look. My first quad was the Esheen 250 Racer ready to fly. Oh, that is a terrible quad. Let's have a look at this one. Back to my ugly mug cam. We'll Google this. Esheen 250 Racing Drone. I think, is this like a plastic one? Yep. I remember this bad this bad boy. Let's have a look. I think it was almost like a bit like the work here. Oh, they don't even it's not even on the bangers website. Let's have a look at some pictures though. I actually think I don't even know if I had one of these. Rotor concepts, that's what we're gonna look at. Here we go. Let's see uh let's see this bad boy. Give me, uh, if you've got any comments, put them down now. Look at this fabulous drone here, the E50 Racer 250 FPV drone. Wingman Tony actually had one of these at fail safe and flew away and, yeah, it was not good. And I can remember, he's like, it's not coming, it's flying away, it's flying away. We're in the field and this drone is sort of taken off. He's like, I can't get it back. I've lost control. He's running around with his roommate. He's like, I've got it, I've got it. It's coming back. I don't know if he's had GPS or something. It started coming back, and I was like, you've got control. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Wave still got it because it was just floating away. He disarmed. It fell from, you know, 20 meters up, 30 meters up, and I don't know if a broken arm or something, but that was it. Then he came over, and he's like, Stuart, help me build a real FPV drone. Anyway, I feel like I'm ignoring some of you guys' questions here. Let's have a look here. Yeah, uh, we should try a, ch a challenge video with racing like Walmart drones against each other. My first drone was the Walkira Runner 250. I think that was very, very similar to this, and still a piece of garbage. I can remember Bruce from RC Model Reviews. He, uh, how much do you reckon this is going to be on Amazon? Let's have a look. 300 bucks. Currently unavailable. Well, that's that's good to know then. Radio. Uh, you should, uh, read that one, read that one, the Wally drone, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad looking, but let's jump in, answer some more of your questions, here we got one from Young Buckets, <clears throat> and if you have any questions, just throw them in the comments down below, does the iFlight Nazgul 5 come with a 5.8 gigahertz VTX, absolutely, so if you, my, all our analog, I'm going to say 99% of our analog drones come with a 5.8 gigahertz VTX, so, one thing, <coughs> excuse me, to note is as well, if you're getting your drone, like this is running 5.8, that's what you use for the video. It doesn't matter what video goggles you get. You don't need to get Fat Sharks or Sky Zones or Omways, all of those. It doesn't, you don't need a specific brand. You don't need to match VTX brand to VTX uh, goggles. They will all kind of universally work. It's just like, I don't know what a good, good analogy is going to be, but you've got your car. You don't need to go and get you buy your car from Ferrari, or if you're super rich, I don't know where you, where you get your car from. You don't need to go to the Ferrari petrol station to fill it up. You can fill it up at any survey. Same with, you know, if you buy a cheap car, you could still go to the Ferrari petrol station if they had one or, you know, some other junk. You can fill it up. Worst analogy I think I've ever done. <clears throat> uh, oh, man, we've got super chats all coming in. Thanks very much, bro. I'm going to be, I'm rich after this. I've made $15, $17 all up. 
Uh, radio, this one's from jo- Jello Ben. You're the main reason I got into FBV. Much love. You know, I love Grumpy Trev. Yeah, I love that old bugger too. So he's been super busy. I do have to get him back on the channel. He just hasn't been getting out to go flying as much, as it, which is a bit of a shame. And he's super busy sort of with his business. Um, he does a lot of IT stuff and it's a lot involved around medical stuff. So his is very, he's just flat out, I think now all the time doing a ton of work. Uh, and Plummet FPV, appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for that two dollar super chat. Huge uh, shout out to you as well, because yeah, it does definitely does make a difference when we can't. I can't even get outside to go and start flying. So I don't know. It uh, every little bit does help. But back to uh, Jello Ban. I am so happy that I got you into FPV. That's what this hobby for me. It changed my life, and that's what I want to give back to you. That's what my channel is all about. It's about sharing FPV, just getting people together, getting out, going flying when you're not in lockdown and just having an awesome time because FPV is so life-changing for your mental health and just making friends and solving problems. And I don't know, tell me in the comments, I'm sure, how many people, they watch this hobby, they thought, that looks really fun, that looks really cool. They get their drone, they go out flying, and then... They start to look at the world differently. So I know once I got into flying, I could not drive in the car without looking out the window being like, oh, oh, I could I could fly there. Oh, man, imagine ripping a drone around that. That looks fun. That looks amazing. I even started looking at houses and like where I wanted to live. Like, what does the backyard look like? I could turn this into a race course. I could put some race gates there, all that sort of stuff. And I'm sure a lot of people would do the same as well. Uh, Nick Sebring, he says, luckily, uh, he lives just around the corner from a park and nobody is there most of the time. I'm lucky where I live at the moment. Down the road, there's a bit of construction. You kind of jump the fence. Not that I'm advocating for trespassing, but you go through some certain parts in the fence. You walk about uh, 100 meters, 200 meters, and there's like a little reserve. You've seen a lot of my videos and it is just, I call it like, it's the field of dreams. It's just beautiful out there. I really like doing some freestyle out there. And I never used to be a freestyle pilot, but I don't know. Uh, Techno FPV says, a friend of mine bought those exact old parts he got from an old shop when he had them in storage. Are they worth building? We should have a classic week where we all build and use and fly our old drones. So are you saying a friend of yours bought like like the Emax Nighthawk or something? I would say it's if you've got nothing better to do and you, they, they still will fly, but if you're about to go and spend the money, definitely don't pick up any of these old things. They're just... They really are rubbish. So we, we were still doing a lot of learning. We didn't know what worked, what didn't work, what was a good idea, what was a bad idea. Like if we look here, let's have a look at some of these examples, like the screen, not the screen, uh, the little part on the top, that's our camera. A lot of people wouldn't even know what is this little part on the top. That's where we used to put our camera and you can see it has like some little, we used to call them vibration dampeners. So they that's how much jello they had. And that's where you'd put your camera on top of that so you try to reduce the jello by having that that rubber piece underneath. So it definitely wasn't like today. They're not going to be silky smooth. The camera is not tilted. This one's got plastic arms and a uh, PDB board that is part of the frame, which is a terrible idea. The antenna is stuck at the top, so that's just going to break off in one of the first crashes. I don't know what the two lights at the front are doing. The props would be absolute garbage on this. The motors are underpowered. It probably only runs a 3S, like, and it would be heavy to boot as well. It would have no power. It doesn't have smart audio. You'd need to use dip switches to change the channels. It would be on limited channels. It's probably stuck on 25. This antenna here, they are very, very low quality. All in all, you know, just on a on a quick look. Uh, I never reviewed this one because I always thought they were garbage. But, yeah, you can see just how many problems they had with it. And a lot of times people would say, Stuart, why, why, why are you so enthusiastic about this drone or that drone? You never seem to get too upset. It's because I didn't review things like this. If I reviewed drones like this, you would see me absolutely lose it and say, what a pile of uh, trash that this is. Because these things don't get me excited. I feel like these kind of drones are just entitled to suck people's money out and they're not going to have a good time in the hobby. Camera had like 15 or 20 degrees tilt. Yeah, the camera on here looks uh, definitely, it looks like it's actually pointing down. All right, Young Buckets. What does Beta Flight help with and does it work with every flight controller and ESC? So that's a really good question. Beta Flight is the firmware that runs, I'm going to say, on 90% of our firmwares, on, on 90% of our flight controllers in our craft. There is also Race Flight. There's KISS, which I know, don't ask me KISS questions. I know, like, nothing i'm just going to say i know nothing about kiss uh setups or anything like that i've only flown a handful but yeah beta flight 
if your firmware and flight controller is flashed with Betaflight, you can connect up to your Betaflight configurator on your computer. And that's where you do all your setups and um, just find out how, how your drone works. You set your mode, you set your mapping, you set your throttle, you set your OSD menus, all that sort of stuff. You set your smart audio options and it just, it does work with, I would say, 95% of FPV flight controllers and it's universal so you don't need to get a special beta flight to use a special beta flight board they all just kind of work together but a really really good um good question there uh here we've got one from spin to spin thanks i'm not sure isn't a new fpv fat shark digital system coming out soon well if we look let's google back to my mug here and fat shark what was it what was the name of that that one, it was the Fat Shark uh, bite, bite Frost. Fat Shark Bite Frost. And oh, it's even on bangers. Is it on bangers? Nope. It just came up as an ad for bangers. Let's have a look. We're... Get FPV. Here we go. So... Here is the Fat Shark Bite Frost Digital FPV system. And ah, thanks very much, Plummet FPV. Try Flight One. Uh, you'll love it. Actually, I should say Flight One. Definitely Grange used to race them quite a bit. I think he switched back over to Beta Flight, but he was a big Flight, flight One. Well, that's what I meant by, by race flight. But uh, the Fat Shark Bite Frost Digital system, it just, I don't know. I feel like it doesn't have enough this is this a lot of people get upset when i talk about this right because they don't want to like they're kind of too hopeful but when we're talking about digital fpv in the future and i'm sure you guys can comment about this as well the limitations that those systems have are it is extremely hard to get a low latency reliable digital fpv and the amount of money that's been sunk into the dji ecosystem and the amount of money that dji has for that r d is massive and if you expect a company like Bite Frost or Fat Shark to come out and try and compete with that, you're going to be um, severely. What, how's it look like when it's actually inside the craft? You're going to be severely disappointed. I think I actually tried a. I hope I can talk. I'm just going to talk about it anyway. I'm not. I didn't sign any NDAs, but there's an Omway new system that I was testing. I even made the video for you guys and all they wanted to do the, the agreement I guess that I said in the email was will will I test it yes and then they had permission they had the permissions over if I was allowed to publish it or not so I made this big video about it we did all these digital tests on this new system and at the end of the day like look we still want to refine some new bugs out, get some bugs out we want to fix a few things and refine the system so yeah in my library I have an Omway digital video but I just can't show it to you guys yet so I need to wait and see uh hopefully if they fix that but look it was the same sort of problems it, it wasn't nearly as reliable as the uh dji system but the bite frost for me was i don't know well i didn't even actually get to test the bite frost this is just from videos that i saw and it, it looked a bit depressing anyway it didn't look like it lived up to the the hype and everybody thought it was going to be DJI, dji competitor but it just didn't seem to be the case and fat shark does not want to send me one because they probably don't want me to give my opinion on it <clears throat> they only like a few select people to make comments about their products all right the own need tips uh what to buy full setup for beginner but i've played liftoff spent quite spent quite some times and i can get did i say good what should i buy first right besides the uh english syntax syntax we're going to fix up there if you want to get a beginner setup i would recommend I actually have one here. Let's have a look in my videos. Uh, best beginner FPV setup. And ultimate, here we go. This is the video that you guys should be watching if you want to get into the hobby. Man, look how young I am in this, this bad boy. So this is just at the start. I don't know what I was talking about. Uh, this was... Oh yeah, okay, so everybody wanted me to do an updated version. And you can see here this video, which I will paste the link in the in this chat right here. We've got a Tyrannus radio. We've got some of the comfiest goggles that oh, you, you, you guys can see. We've got some of the comfiest goggles that I have ever had as a beginner set. I really like these. We're called them the Nun goggles. We've got some charges. And I think we're flying around the Lava X or something. So this video right here, I'll put the link in. 
uh, there we go. So you should be able to click that link and you'll get that. I can't remember who asked that question. Uh, Redbeard the pilot. Thanks very much for your uh, super chat there, bro. Four ninety nine. Um, that's a cup of coffee. Uh, my first quad was based off your getting to the three hundred video. Thanks for the addiction. Congrats on the rugrats. So thanks for a few things to unpack there. So first things first. Yeah, we uh, for anybody who doesn't know, we have a one month old daughter. So you know, and a three year old as well. So the amount of sleep we have been getting is absolutely minuscule. You can't, you know, like I was mentioning, it's very hard if you've got kids at this time to get outside and do anything exciting with them they are just making the biggest mess and we're trying to come up with all these different fun games I actually installed a swing set out the back because all the parks are closed so i bolted a swing set to the house and it's uh we've been going to the park which is in our backyard which is about as good as we can do but uh you i'm so glad that i was able to get you in the hobby on that original 300 dollars setup because this is like a uh 2019 version that we're looking at but yeah that original one i think that used the Esheen wizard uh, the original first one, and it used some Krillin FPV goggles. I don't even know if that company's around anymore, but that was amazing for the time. That was as good as you could get. People often love the rip on the Esheen brand or the Esheen Wizard, and it's not what it used to be. It's definitely uh, the prices stayed relatively value-ish or value cheapish, but the product isn't as good quality as it used to be back then. And people can scoff and say, Ishin Wizard used to be good quality. We'll have a look in a minute and you'll be surprised why uh, so many people got excited about it. And challenge FPV. Challenge accepted is asking, any idea why my video doesn't even go 15 feet with stock antennas? Uh, the reason of that is because you're probably on the wrong channel. That'd be my biggest thing. You've, there's a few things. So either you're on the wrong channel and the video frequency on your and on your goggles and the VT, a VTX channel frequency are mismatched. So that's why it's falling out as soon as you disappear. Or your VTX could be in pit mode. So which means it's not set to the correct milliwatt. So it's not really pumping out any signal. You could have some terrible interference in if you try it outside. Definitely if it's inside, it could be near your router or there could just be some external environmental interference. Or the third one, maybe the pigtail has snapped off your VTX and you can't, um, you can't see anything because it's just pumping out. It doesn't have an antenna to push the, the signal out of. So that would be my top four things that I would check out. Uh, let's have a look here. Um, I shouldn't whistle into, uh, I thought Omway went out of big business. That's from big FPV. Yeah, that was, some people started just spruiking that. And I don't know why, where that rumor came out of, but definitely not. They're still just focusing on digital FPV. Uh, Steve, Betty, digital competition. Yeah, DJI is the devil. Absolutely. I agree. I wish there were more digital companies out there making stuff. So Omway, I wish them all the best. Fat Shark, I wish them all the best as well. Even though they don't like me and I, I, their product at the moment, I think kind of sucks. I want them to make better products. I want this competition to be out there. Competition is great for us consumers, us pilots. I'm you know, I get to fly around with all the best drones in the world, but what I want for you guys is to have the choice. So if you came down to it, what money do you have to spend on drones? We don't want to just be locked in behind one company. I totally agree. All right. Stu, please do another epic cheapest drone possible video. <laughs> Who do you guys really want that $99 build? Uh, but just Ah, oh, Big D, FPV, huge shout out to you. What's up, Stu? Not much, man. Just doing a live stream. Thanks for uh, stopping in. And I'd love to know, too, what you guys think about jumping on here, doing a live stream once a week and just having a good time. All righty. Oh, let's scroll down here. Young Buckets is asking, how do you get your battery voltage to show on your goggles while you're flying? So that is based on the OSD in your craft. You Most of the time, our drones today have a built-in, you'll hear me often say, and I'll ramble it off relatively quickly, is has a built-in Betaflight OSD. I'm sure if I just Google, Google something here, where are we? Uh, Omnibus F4, that'll do. First... First one here, we're going to have a look at Phaser FPV, which is a local shop in Australia. And let's see if he's selling it. Let's just have a look at his flight controllers. And you'll see most of them will say, let's go away. Most of them will say built in all these things coming soon. Well, he's got a lot coming soon. Let's have a look here. 
let's just have a look at, let's say this one. Out of stock, but it will have a built-in OSD. I'm sure it'll say that somewhere on here. Unless I'm blind and I can't read it. Jumper section. Ah, here we go. OSD configuration. Omnibus design. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, most of the controllers nowadays, if you get a modern one from 2018, 2019, 2020, they are going to have uh, built-in OSD. And all, you don't need to do anything except connect your camera to the flight controller, connect your VTX to the flight controller. So normally, we used to connect them back in the old school days. You would send your camera signal across to your VTX signal. Now you send your camera signal into your flight controller. And then from your flight controller, you have three little wires that go out to your VTX or four little wires if you're using smart audio. So, And you do that by running it through one of these, which has an OSD on there. And that just automatically displays it on the screen while you're flying around. Livestream is awesome. This is from Duck McSquee. Livestream is awesome. Makes lockdown and work way better. Yes, Stu, what music do you like? That's from Echo B, FPV. You know what? I'm going to show you one of the world's best songs you have ever listened to, and it's all about FPV. You guys are in for a treat. Watch this. And uh, if you've already seen this video, I apologize, but uh, I enjoy making myself laugh. FPV. And this one is from Duck McSquee, who helped me on this uh, because there's a bit of a backstory behind this video we're about to watch. Uh, and you guys have to help me with the sound. But Gearbest sent me a drone that did, <laughs> they, they, they sent it to me twice, right? So this Gearbest drone, it didn't work, and I was like, look, this isn't this isn't working. It broke on my first flight. This is not terrible. Because they're like, why haven't you done the review? Blah, blah, blah. They were carrying on like a you know, like a pork chop or chook without its head, whatever. Anyway, so I thought, okay, send me another one. I'll, I'll review it again because I explained that it's broken. They sent me an entire new drone. I flew it, and it broke on the second pack. And then I was like, man, these, this is broken. And they're like, no, you're just saying that. You just want another free drone. I was like, okay, here's your review. Here's your, this is uh, the last gear best product we're going to do for a while. So let's change this and check this amazing video out when I did a wrap. I'm just going to let this one play because it's it only goes for two minutes, but God, it makes me laugh. <laughs> now this is a review all about how this piece of shit quad made me frown. I'd like to take five minutes and watch right here and tell you about this drone that made me despair. And this took about like two days to come up with the music and about five days of solid editing to try to put all these clips together. This is from like a China trip and everything. In mainland China sold it and made. A cheap knocker quad was ordered and appraised. VTX motors and a camp two. That's the drone there. Your best main store HQ when a couple of problems started to show. Stuff didn't work. I'm thinking, oh no, it took one little flight before I declared this piece of drone needs to be repaired. Started the video saying, g'day, but should you buy it? I'm thinking, no way. On my first flight, it's decided to kick it so i called up your best filed a support ticket customer support you know, <laughs> this is bad waiting for weeks to ship it first class so it finally turns up i'm thinking all right time, time for, for number, number two, two to, to finally take, take flight, flight. wait we have some problems soldering all that is this a type of drone 90 dollars get set i don't think so so we'll see when we get air i hope you're prepared but buyer beware Anyway, that was uh, one of the best music videos I think you can watch about FPV. We had Grumpy Trev in there, but that was kind of my way to stick it to Gearbest because they kept hassling me about where's this video, all this sort of stuff. So I better put pause. So we did a <laughs> review video that was a lot of fun. But some people, I don't know, it only got like 10,000 views, so I don't know how many people like that. But if you want to watch a bit of a gem, I think that's a pretty funny video. All right, Bennett Fox, hey Stu, was wondering what happened to Grumpy Trev. So thanks so much for the donation, and I should say Grumpy Trev, he still likes flying, just doesn't have as much time as he used to because he runs an IT business and it's in like the medical department. And so the stuff he's looking at, he's super busy at the moment trying to work with a lot of... Uh, medical professionals and he's pretty much saving the world he's like a real real life superhero don't tell him i, I said that though uh wild child have you flown sanchez before and uh all-in-ones okay for tiny 
Sharks are tiny. Sharks any good. I don't know what most of that sentence means. Sorry, wild child, but are all in ones okay? I think you mean for. I I don't even know what you mean for tiny sharks. So, unless that's like their little micro drone that they did from Fat Shark. Let's have a let's have a Google. Tiny shark from Fat Shark. Tiny. If it's not that. Shiny shark. Fat shark. Uh, are they any good? Ah, uh, okay. That's that's these things right here. So for anybody playing along at home, the tiny shark is this little bad boy. This little bad boy. Is it? Ah, oh, fat shark. Ah, oh, the mini shark. Maybe if you mean that. I would say, look, it's a cheap toy. You might have a little bit of fun, but don't expect it to uh, be a full-fledged FPV uh, experience. Fun to try out the hobby, but maybe not worth the dollars. You'd be better off saving up and getting a, a real piece of kit. All right. Uh, someone else, Dakash, mate, this channel made me interested in drone flying. I am so happy that that did for you. Trev got taken by aliens. Uh, Sky and water, what's your, your choice? Uh, let's have a look. Grumpy Trevor saving the world. Man, there's a lot of comments I need to scroll down to check out. Uh, Mr. Shady, what's the best five inch binder fly you know of at the moment? Well, I need more clarifiers. So if, and you guys can help us out and chat what the best, what, like what example, best value, best performance, best starter, best freestyler, best robust drone. And he, uh, it, it needs more clarifying around that. Okay, this one's from Echo B. Hey, Stu, what's the coolest place you have ever flown? That's a pretty good question. And I would say... Uh, you know what? I, I, I'm I, not 100% sure. Every place has been on my videos. There is a place that I enjoy that's a little bit out of town. I've gone there with Grumpy Trev. It's really fun to fly around. It's in some videos where Cal uh, has turned up. It's about 40 minutes away, but all in the ground, there's all this iron ore. So when you crash inside your motors, the trees are perfect spacing. You can have some amazing tracks there, but when you crash, you get all this sort of stuff uh, stuck in your motors. What I'm going to do, I'll see if I can show you what the track looks like. Because it's in one of my happy flying videos. I really like, uh, I really like it, but it's not, not ideal. Because every, yeah, you don't want to wreck your motors on every single crash. Anyway, that's going to take too long to kind of Google. But I don't know. Other than that, um, doing FPV in China was pretty cool with Trev. Uh, Gearbest also had no idea. Here's another thing. They were like, oh, we want you to film some videos while you're over here. Because I went over and sort of went with Cal. We had a bit of a China, China trip. And that's hard to say 10 times quick. Went over to China. We tested a whole bunch of stuff out. And they're like, oh, just go rip this outside. And I'm thinking, man, this isn't even bound. This is on like a fly sky radio you just taken out of the box. You haven't tested this. There's like a thousand people just outside. You can't just rip this drone up skyscrapers and do whatever in mainland China. So definitely uh, that was not, not they had no idea about what, really what these drones were capable of. I'm kind of throwing them under the under the bus here, but not not the biggest fan. Uh, what's a good toothpick to buy from Lewis Kenny? And I would say you should check out the Armiton Tadpole. I really like that one. Um, is that place with the river? No, that you're thinking Echo B. You're thinking of that cool track. That's the test track. That's a bit um, over, not overgrown, but they've put too many trees and stuff there. So you actually, you know, you, you can't fly there as much as we used to in like 2015. All right, so Matthew Smiley's, Stu, I priced out your $99 build, and they both came out to $173. Recommendations for this question. I want to build one. So I hope you're looking at it in US dollars because so many people love to say, Stu, when I looked at your video, that's not a, you, you said $99, it's this much in Australian dollars. That's good, mate. Welcome to the world of doing maths and conversion, and I can't control if prices change or anything like that. Uh, but I know everybody wants a new $99 bill. That's all people seem to ask. Have you ever flown in New Zealand? I have not, Jack, but I would love to get over there because i got some mates over there that I would uh, desperately love to get over and see. And also, uh, Bruce is over there, and I just think New Zealand is a really cool place. I would love to go and live there, but someone said, Stu, what about the weather? You know, that kind of sucks there, and I thought about it. I was like, yeah, it does, but you know what? The weather sucks where I live here as well. It makes flying really hard. So it might not be that bad. I don't, really, truthfully, the only reason I stay where I am is I would love to move there. I would move there tomorrow if uh, 
John O was over there, Trev, Cal. If my mates were there, I would be I would be going like let's let's move. I'd say say to the wife, let's move, love. We're moving, moving. But uh, the only reason I stay here is really because my friends are in in this area, and it's crazy because they're all from FPV. Even though I have some friends over there, it's uh yeah. So thanks very much, John O and Calvin and Tony for uh, ruining my dreams of living in another country. It's all all your fault. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, someone's talking about toothpicks designed by Kebab. I'm sure he does some good work. I wish he'd just stick to one, though, instead of having a new different one every week. Even though, just my opinion, as he says in all his videos. Uh, always windy in Wellington. It's always windy here as well, uh, Jack. What are the best channels to be on for your goggles and VTX? That's from Challenge Accepted. It doesn't really matter. Like, I think uh, lower, the lower channels, lower frequencies will technically have a better penetration through trees and water and concrete and all that sort of stuff. But if you are flying around, if someone said to me you could be on 5760 or 5800, 5880, I, you know, I wouldn't care. It's, you're not going to find that it's too much of a difference. The only thing you need to do is match them up with other pilots who are flying as well. So you don't want to be on the same channel as someone else because you'll blow them out of the air. I see, man. Stu, always love your excitement. Haven't seen if you rev reviewed GEP RC. I'm interested in a Cine drone. Well, excuse me, too much soda water for me. I've kind of been reviewing so many uh, Cine B, Cine Whoop drones at the moment. That seems to be all that's coming out. I think there even is a, I don't know, there's a ton on my channel. Just go back, look at recent videos, and you can you can have a look. All right, let's have a look here. How long has this stream been going for? 40 minutes. Um, people just talking about Banggood warehouses in California. Someone saying still talking about New Zealand all day. We've got Mr. Shady, got a Mobula 6. It's the bomb. I need more batteries, though. What are the ones worth getting? Uh, for the Mob 6, here's some advice as well. When it comes to small batteries, I say just get your talk. Mob 6 is this one. I'll put it on the screen so people know what I'm talking about. Let's have a look here. That is this little bad boy. So the Mob 6 is, uh, I don't know. I, I found it to, I, I also get the 19,000 kV version because I thought it was more than fast enough on that. It's a great little indoor flyer. It's a lot of fun. And just some little cheap batteries like these bad boys down here. That's, that's probably what I'd be picking up, something like that, as long as it's got the correct connector. Don't waste money on really expensive 1S little Whoop batteries. It is not worth it for 99% of the people out there. Just get your normal, cheap little packs because you're going to be overcharging them anyway. You're going to be fully discharging them, and they're so cheap. Like, well, how much are these batteries coming out? They're coming out, that's 24 US, so what's that in American? That's probably... Uh, like $17, so you might be looking at like $3 a battery for it. Just get cheap ones. It's so much better. The more expensive ones, they're going to be twice the price, and you're not going to get twice the performance. So that's what I'd be recommending anyway. All right. So uh, Nick McD McDongrow. Oh, man, I don't know how to pronounce that. But you're asking DJI or Crossfire for the RC link, and I would say... Probably Crossfire because I prefer the radio, but for the actual link quality, I, I, I don't know which one would be better. I, I'm not going to be flying long enough range to know the difference between that. Uh, Rombo RC, how accurate are onboard current sensors? And I would say I don't know. I, I don't know. Like. How how accurate do you need them to be? I would say accurate enough if they're just in your flight controller and stuff because when you're going to be punching out like 100 amps from your 5S, you know, monster 5-inch rig you're flying around and it's jumping between a 110-amp pull and then down to 40-amp pull in like two seconds, how, how accurate do you need it to be? Uh, Stu, I have a controller, transmitter, goggle, receiver combo, quads, battery straps. Is that all I need? So this one's from GT Gaming and Music. So well, if you've got your, yeah, you need a drone. So if you've got your transmitter and you've got your goggles, I oh, know oh, you do say quad. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what you need. Maybe a charger. You might need to think about picking up a charger. 
um, looking to immigrate to NZ and AS, but I was told too old for that. New Zealand does have some earthquakes. Yes. Uh, I need a better charger. Oh, let's just jump. Someone's getting their Mobula 6 tomorrow. Ryu, uh, Banggood batteries don't ship to my country. What do I do? Just Google the batteries and buy them from somewhere else. Uh, Stu, do you own a Mobula 7? This one's from Chad Hollis. Uh, I do. Is there any Mobula mob you can recommend to convert it? No, I would say I, I quite like the Mobula 7. I thought it was great. It's fantastic flying around outdoors. All I would say is fly it around on 1S if you're indoors and then keep 2S for outdoors. But use a bigger battery, like maybe a 450, if you're going to be flying around the mob Mobula 7 if you're flying around indoors. Um, okay, Blake Blackbeard. Wow, that... That's that's a lot of bees in your name, Blake Blackbeard. But you're asking, uh, for a 1S 65mm drone, would you recommend brushed or brushless for mainly indoor flying? You know what? Get this Mob 6. For indoor flying, I felt like this was the best little indoor, non-HD, just flying around, having fun little craft. That's probably what I would be picking up. And I know the tiny whoop people out there are going to tell me so many things on you can get such a better flying craft if you use the brush motors and all this jazz all this sort of stuff you know what i just want a quad i can take out of the box i don't have to do too much work to and it flies great this was a fantastic solution to that and plus brushed motors burn out they have a limited lifetime brushless are uh, much they just you know last a lot a lot longer um still a lot of another Questions. I found this cool build on Rotor Builds. It cost me sixty dollars to build. Can you check it out? Also have a three D printer. Just curious. Well, look, if you want to, it, you kind of get what you pay for in this hobby. So if you found a complete build you can do for sixty dollars, you're probably going to find that it's going to have some serious limitations. Yeah, you might be getting your frame for free. Three D printed frames are just an exercise in patience, and also, uh, what's what's it called when something doesn't go your way and then you just have to accept it and move on maybe like a little zen exercise because that frame is going to break in about two seconds um for especially if you're printing out of pla or some other maybe you're amazing at printing and you can get away with it but a carbon frame's like 20 bucks just whack it onto one of those is the dji spark a good drone i i i don't know it's okay i guess dji does make some okay stuff GMB lipos for any micro flight pack. That's from Profit one one two three six. Night train FPV is saying brushless motors have four hours flight life. He's talking brushed because I know brushed motors have a, a very very uh, low low lifetime. That's why you need to buy a whole different packs of them. People saying brushless rules. Oh yeah, he did mean brush. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, after four hours, if you're using brushed they're going to start really decreasing in uh, performance and quality. Here's a good one from Mike Wood. Uh, you're asking, what goggles do you recommend? The Hawkeye VR or the Ishii 800D? Or is there something else I'm missing around that price point? I can't stress this enough. The EV 800D and get ready to rage in the comments are not the best value goggle at all. I feel like they're uncomfortable on your face. They hang out way too far. They're too heavy. You can get some eye strain. I don't know why so many people recommend them. And I feel like it's one of those things where a lot of say, I've got them, they're, they're pretty good because they're invested in that and they don't want to uh, sort of tell themselves that they've wasted their money on getting those. The Nighthawk goggles are far superior in every single way. And I wish more people would review them. I got them as a joke. I was like, this, is, this cannot possibly be a good set of goggles. I tried them on and you can see in the video, I was absolutely amazed. Other uh, sky zones. This one's from Oxy. Thanks for tagging me too with the at UAV futures. It helps it helps the questions. Uh, if you're asking me a question, type at UAV futures space and then put your question because it makes it much easier for me to be able to read the comment. Uh, sky zones uh, O2X is any good? Yeah, I absolutely love them. So they're these ones right here, and I think these are pretty much the best value goggles on the market. to change it from Australian dollars because USD and I don't know how much they got in the USA we'll click on a USA warehouse 
Oh, getting up there a bit in price though. What, what are these? These must be the O2Xs. The 377 for the O2Xs. Let's have a look at the O2Cs. This is looking a bit better. We're down to 266 US dollars. Screen cap. So yeah, I would say these goggles here. That's that's uh, I don't know what. And also, this is another point. This, the price difference does fluctuate by like $10 if you buy a plain version, like the red version. But if you want to get like a fancy pants version, uh, well, it jumps up by $10. So that's just something to know as well. But for $268, I feel like these are the best value goggles on the market. What about the Commander V1Ss for profit? Uh, I would say they are a great goggle as well. And sometimes you can get them as cheap as 150 bucks, but that seems to be on like those big Black Friday specials. They are gold as well. If you can get them for that price, I would be more than happy to fly around with them. I flew around with the original Commanders for one whole year. I loved them. Grumpy Trev still really likes these. He still flies around with his original ones. So yeah, great, great choice. It's all about how much money you want to spend. But if I had to choose these, the Sky Zones are in the sweet spot for me between value, performance, and price. All right, Jack Chapman, thank, and thanks for everybody who's tagging me with the channels. It makes it so much easier uh, answering these questions. What power supply do I use? I don't use a power supply because they're built into my chargers, but they're the O2, what is it? I'll Google here, Sky RC O200, 200Q. It's going back a few years, and I don't even know if they still sell them anymore. Here's my charger. This is the charger that I use. And I think I did do a video on this. So right here, this is the charger that I've, uh, that I use. They've been very reliable. I've got two of them. They're very dusty. I probably need to clean them out, but yeah, overall I've, I've done hundreds upon hundreds of batteries through these things and they've never, never missed a beat. Some of the cables are a little bit old now, and I would probably need to replace these balance cables down here because they don't seem to be, uh, and you can connect it up to your phone as well. But yeah, I've got nothing but good things to say about this charger. Besides, it can be a little bit noisy with the fan. Um, UAV future, this one's from KV FPV. What do you do to repair delaminated carbon like on the arm? You can buy some special stuff. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. I have a video about it. I think it might even be one of my Tech Tuesday videos. If you go through my channel and have a look, you can get like, it's like some special glue, arrow diet stuff that you mix in and it kind of, I don't know, it's, it's never going to be back to the original way. And if you've broken your arm in the middle, it's not going to be good. But if it's starting to delaminate on the outside, just on the tip of the arm, it might help just a little bit. Um, all right, future FPV. This is saying, hey, Stu, I started watching your channel back in 2018. And you helped me get into the hobby. Started with Racer Star Motors as cheap parts. And now I have quality building parts and a new 6S rig. So that's going to be a huge step up. <laughs> Uh, from a, I think, how much is a Racer Star motor? Racer Star 2203? Two? Ah, five. Let's, let's try. It's probably like $8. $36 for four. That's a ripoff. Here we go. $8 a motor. <laughs> and, uh, these are the original motors of my uh, $99 build. And a lot of people love to rag on them. And yeah, the quality is definitely like a four out of 10, but you know what? For the value, you cannot, if someone said to me, this is all you can have, yeah, I would still fly around with these things. And you would still get better performance than the drones I started back with those old school days, like on the Emax motors we and stuff. We had a look at the very start of the uh, live stream on the Emax Nighthawk and that sort of stuff. These motors, I think, would be better than them. It's just the durability on the um, shaft here is probably where it's gonna snap off in a hard crash. But a new 6S rig is definitely going to feel so much better than those. Uh, Corio Mano is saying, still flying with the Commander V1Ss. Yes, they're fantastic goggle. Um, Echo B, I don't know what he's saying. You did a review. Yeah, I did, did lots of reviews on this channel. Someone, okay, Mr. Shady, he's clarified himself. He's saying, what's the best quality buy and fly to, uh, worth buying? Um... Let's have a look. If you want the quality, which is probably like, you're probably looking at a Catalyst Machine Works, uh, Bind and Fly, maybe the Bang God. 
here we go, which is the, this one here. I'm just skipping this so you don't have to watch the ads. It's someone teaching me uh, music lessons or something. Put your battery on here. It's this drone right here. This is uh, one of the best ones, I think. Yeah, so the, the Vanguard, it's on Catalyst Machine Works. I'm sure you can Google it. It's just a really nice all-round drone, and it's really reliable and sturdy as well, and it flies great. So if you want a quality bind and fly, definitely check out that one. All right, back to some more questions here. Um, talk to... Uh, so Jack Chapman is asking about the Sam Gook motors, and they went out of business, actually. So they were really good. I would say, for anybody interested, they don't sell them anymore. But these motors from DYS, DYS, I don't know what happened to them. They're still on bangers, but these motors, uh, they were pretty special at the time because you can get one of those for $9 nowadays. That is probably used to be one of the best value motors on the market when they first came out. And they first came out like 2018, maybe. But all in all, uh, yeah, pretty, for the price, a very, very good motor. Uh, Manuel Fry is saying he bought the HDO2s to switch from the EV800s and I can't fly. It's just going to take some time to get used to it. I know a lot of times it's all personal preference and something that you're used to. And I feel like that's where I have an advantage when it comes to reviewing products, being objective with what I like to fly around with. Because if you're just the sort of person, say I give a new set of goggles to somebody who's only ever flown with the EVA 100 days, it's going to be so different from what they are used to. It's going to be hard to make an objective review because they're looking for those feelings and those familiarities they had with their other goggles. But for me, uh, because I try so many and I'm constantly changing, and that is one consistency I have is the inconsistency of goggles, radios, excuse me, all that sort of stuff. It makes it easy to say, this is what works, this is what doesn't work. And yeah, I feel like that bias or that you can get towards a personal preference that you are used to from experience and familiarity is something that I can overcome in my reviews and, and give you the right information. Uh, we have more people still asking about the $99 2020 version. Uh, Emacs Ecos, they are fantastic. iFlight E motors are really good though. So FPV Attitude's got some great advice there. Yep. Nowadays, if you want value motors, I would talk about the Emacs Ecos. Uh, yeah, iFlight E's. Can you review the GEP RC Mark II? Uh, let me Google that. What is it, Mark? Find and fly. Uh, there's, a, there's a skip HD. That was a good little one. I don't know what it, that is. I'll have to search around for that a little bit more. What's the worst drone a company ever sent you for review? Probably uh, this one. I'm going to see if I can Google it. UAV Futures worst drone. Oh, here we go. Well, the worst drone I have, the worst drone ever made. That's that's what it's titled. This piece of garbage. You want the good stuff? Oh, <laughs> listen to my voice at the start of this video. This this is how you impress the ladies as well. You got to you got to talk. You've about been it. asking for it. You want the good stuff? <laughs> oh, cringe. G'day, Whoa. Stu from UAV Futures here, and I know what you're thinking. Stuart, your reviews, you seem so positive about drones, you seem so enthusiastic, you love so many of these things, and yes, good sirs and lasses, all these drones on the wall behind me, I have had a lot of fun with, except for maybe one or two, like maybe this one on the fire over there, but that's besides the point. This, this one, thing, this is what happens when I say yes, shit. I will review something that typically, I would say that just looks like a piece of rubbish. So what this is, this is the Hawker 280. Look at it. Look at the garbage that is this quad. That you just know it's got to be good when it's got this big canopy on the top. Same sort of thing. PDB, stress board, holding things together. 
We're just going to jump into the flight experience and you will see what happens. Because you don't need to know about the internals. The internals are that it is garbage. Uh, is it the Hawker 270? What are you going back in time, Stu? <laughs> what do you mean? This looks like something out of the 70s. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should say, Trevor, you helped me set this up because what happened? I tried to get the software. The software didn't even exist anymore. You happen to have an old version on your computer. And uh, how yeah, did watch it what go? happens oh, when this we fly this. just got style written all over. <laughs> uh, it's... I can hardly wait to. God, it I've actually does fly. I have hovered it in the uh, in the uh, workshop. Did you feel confident? Uh, no, look. Cal didn't like it. Right. Here we go. Oh, okay, no fire. Do a line of sight flight first. Whoa! Hey! <laughs> it's, oh, yeah, actually, look at it. It's just, that. It's just no, spinning no, around no, in the air. That. That's going. Uh -oh. so, I'm trying to kill it. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I was that, not doing that. All right, and then we went over, and uh, yeah, it it was broken. So that is the worst quad we have ever flown. Uh, Killer quad, thanks so much for the super chat there, brother. What's up? Shout out to you, man. Oh, uh, all thanks to you. I became a pilot and found a hobby that I love. So thanks for that a lot. Uh, may you and your family stay safe during these hard times. Thanks so much, quad killer. If you got any questions, brother, uh, throw them down. More than happy to answer them. But that's what. That means so much to me to get messages like that because it changed my life. FPV, like I keep saying, it is something special that for a lot of people, you might feel, for me, it really gave me a sense of belonging and FPV is where it's at with meeting people, getting out new places, exploring, having just better connections with friends, feeling more confident and on an FPV, it really is life changing. It's a hobby. I've never felt so passionate about anything in my life. It gives me goosebumps talking about it and just that experience of problem solving and learning and it just so many things stuck together and that's why i make these videos because i thought you know what this has done so much for me i i need other people i want other people to have the chance to experience this hobby for what it is and if my videos have helped you do that it, that i'm so happy because that's what it's all about um oh another one from alex apol hi Stu. do you know off the top of your head if a dell rc engine and a 450 frame will fit in the marmot frame how big is the dell rc engine and a 450 f450 let me have some googles here because off the top of my head uh I'm it didn't confused. even do one i've got to stop this bad drone video let's have a look here dell rc engine Not, not getting the correct Google results. That's probably because I can't spell. Here we go. Oh, that's an ESC. I don't know why I was thinking about a motor. Will this fit? That's this one here. So this bad boy is a beast of an ESC. Yep. That will definitely fit in the Marmot. And what have we got? The F450s. Is that the T motors? Are we talking about T motors? I think. Hmm. Let me have a look. F450, F450 motor. Okay, they look pretty big. Can I need more info on what um what the motor is? But I would say if it's a twenty twenty two size motor, twenty three size motor, yes, it will fit in the marmot. Uh, radio Finn is saying, uh, but definitely. Uh, sorry, I should just finish that that bit from Alex Apol, and also thanks for the super chat. Yes it will the dell rc engine will fit in there easily i just need more help finding the f405 motors so i don't know exactly what ones they are so i can't answer that uh calvin twist which state are you in i am in vic but if you're going to ask me a question try and tag me with the uav futures part at the start because it makes it so much easier uh for me to read the question because it comes up with the little part or uh the super chat comes up with like this big green part so i can read it or yellow part or whatever we have Haxalorus or something is saying, Hi Stu, I'm sure I've already mentioned this. Can you explain how and what caused you to get your first 
uh, first get into FPV and was it intimidating? I purchased my equipment last night. So this one is kind of, this is a great question because I'm getting excited about this. Anything that talks about getting into this hobby, that first moment of life before FPV, I've got to stop looking at myself over here. I should really start looking at myself up here. Life before FPV and life after FPV and the life changing part. So how did I first get into it? Uh, there's a couple of things that all happen. The stars align. So I used to be a school teacher. I guess I'm just a drone teacher, but uh, I've always kind of liked those garbage toys you get from Walmart or Big W, or they, they cost like 30 bucks, 20 bucks. They're still fun. They get hair in the motors. You end up throwing them out. But while you've got them, you're like, this is actually really fun. Anyway, the kids bought in this tiny little micro FPV quadcopter. You know, what? I, give me two seconds. I'm going to go and get it, and then I'll be back because it's uh, it's something that I, it means a lot to me because it's part of my FPV origin, I guess. All right, so we've got this bad boy right here. So this little tiny craft, believe it or not, is kind of one of the factors that kick-started my journey into this RC hobby. You charge this little helicopter up. It's not FPV. One of the kids at school in my class bought this in. I was like, oh, that's fun. Can I have a go? I can't remember the kid's name. Flew it around, and I was like, yeah, that was pretty cool. Happened to go into town, and I saw one of these. I think it was like 40 Australian dollars. I was like, yep, I'm going to get one of those. I wonder if the battery still turns on. No, it's, it's well and truly cooked. But uh, so I got that little drone, little quadcopter that was having some fun. And then I saw a video online and it was about drone racing in the snow. And I thought, that's pretty cool. So I was kind of starting to watch some drone racing videos. I think it was a Vice video. Um, and at during the time after I got this, I was like, I'm having a blast with this. I want to get something better. So I started Googling little RC things. And it was the Hubson X4, which looks like uh this and believe it or not i was watching videos on this i can't believe this is 80 bucks now Jeez, i think i spent some stupid amount of money i don't know what version it was but uh it looked like this so i got one of these and I took that out the back and I started flying around and i was having a blast and the dog was chasing it even my early videos are about uh this thing so if you look at my very first videos and sort by oldest one where is it it's got to be on here there's like a little plastic frame okay maybe it's even before this i can't look at then i started doing thumbnails but anyway so I was like, I'm getting way too distracted into this question. But uh, so I got this, I got this little Hubson thing as that was fun. And then I watched the FPV drones in the snow video. And I was like, you know what, this is cool. Watch some, saw that Star Wars one where it goes through the, uh, through the forest and all that sort of stuff with our racing drones. Like this is cool. I, and I happened, my wife uh, had a relative whose workmate was into FPV. And I only knew him through email. So shout out to John. I'm sure that I haven't emailed him in about five years but if he ever happens to just click in this video at the one hour mark well shout out to you mate i asked him some questions and he said you should get a tyrannus radio and you should get some fat sharks i thought okay that's some reliable advice firsthand i ordered that ordered the emax 250 nighthawk and then bob's your uncle i was hooked went out and started learning and there was a lot of hurdles to get past a lot but i loved it i loved the learning and there was a lot of things and things didn't work like they do nowadays but i got through that and FPV, it is super intimidating at, at the start. If you have not flown before and you put the goggles on, it's going to feel really weird. And I'm sure a lot of people in the chat can attest to this. It's stressful. I didn't like flying so much at the start. Like I loved, I loved it, but I could only do two minutes at a time, one or two packs, and I don't want to fly anymore. I'm too, it's too much. It's too intense. The intensity on your brain and the amount of capacity that it takes up trying to learn to fly worrying about your drone worrying about people worrying about crashing into things where's your drone going to go am i doing it right oh my gosh it's just it's intense so uh i i would get i would say some small anxiety or stress flying it around but keep going because it will click and there is a point when you are flying 
You are no longer thinking about controlling the drone. It just starts to do what you want. And it's like, oh my God, I'm free. I'm, I'm coasting up this path. I'm going under these trees. And it's a really, really special feeling. So it is going to feel intimidating. Don't worry if it doesn't click straight away. Like when we saw at this, if you watch the start of this stream, me flying around at the start, everybody starts out as a beginner. Even Mr. Steel, the God himself, or some of those other amazing pilots, Tommy, oh my God, uh, Stinger Swarm, you know, all those sorts of people. If you watch their early videos, they're going to be really amateur pilots as well. Nobody just starts out with uh, amazing quad skills, you know, from as soon as they're born. As much as they might like you to think differently, everybody was a beginner. And yes, it is intimidating, but just keep at it, work on the sim, and you will get to a point when it's like, I, I can't imagine life without FPV. Radio. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, G Dub FPV. You were one of the first vids I came across a little over a year ago. Keep you kept me motivated with that first ninety-nine dollar bill. Thank you. So many people got into the hobby because of that, and I feel like that's my legacy I left to to FPV. That's something that I'm very proud of. The you know, regardless of the build aside and what people think about it in, you know, if they'd change this bit or put the motors here or that, that part's irrelevant, but people are building that. The amount of people who built that drone and are in the hobby today because of that drone is something that I'm very, very proud of. Um, challenge accepted. There is not difference in video quality when the camera is not is on or off checked and there are no connection issues. Uh, I think you're talking about yeah, you're that that sounds like there's you're on the wrong channel, but please don't power your antenna up, your drone up without your FPV antenna on the drone. It's got to stay on the drone. Your antenna should always be on, but um yeah, I would say you've got them on the wrong wrong channels there. Can you link some replacement Sam Cook motors? So you're probably looking at Emacs Ecos. Twenty Australian dollars. For oh, man, the uh, let's change this USD. The dollars just gone down the toilet. Uh, so here, I think these are pretty good. All the iFlight Ecos. Uh, Ryan is asking, "Hi, Stu. We ever do a blooper video from various footages from your YouTube channel?" I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I think about that, and I do like people learning from my videos and engaging them with the hobby. And I think it is good though, to show some of those things where you're mucking around with your friends. I do have a bit of a banker footage, but I tend to just throw it in as like little special uh, bits at the end of my videos. Sometimes occasionally, probably like one in five or one in 10, you'll find, Oh, that's a funny little thing that happened in the video. Cause I do film quite a lot that is just left on the cutting room floor, but also like making those joke videos. Like recently, if you haven't watched it, go watch that uh, where I reviewed the handheld washing machine hyper shite 3000 or whatever it was all right um there is no substitute time for stick time that is definitely some good advice there from uh, duck my squee yeah, what's the best beginner racing drone with goggles with goggles if you're a beginner just get the nun goggles like we've spoken about the hawkeye vrs which are these ones for people playing at home. Oh, you even get this cool picture on the front now. Is that, is that them? That's the difference. One set one's $102. No, this, this can't be, that's for your phone. And you get these people on the front so you can look extra cool. This is not what you should. FPV monitor, 48 channel folding goggle. What? Oh, hey, see, this is what's meant to be in the front. I don't know what the deal is with uh, this person's put some stickers on there. So, yeah. Uh, radio. You know what? I am going to play one other video where I quickly go to the loo and then I will be back let's uh let's have a look for this bag here another parody video because uh this is this is 
something that should make you laugh. A lot of fed up with seen. trying to get your. Here we go. I'll be back in two seconds. Fed up with trying to get your FPV drones to fit nicely and organized into your bag? Is your FPV transmitter radio case just being an absolute pain and nightmare to fit inside? Maybe you're trying to impress those FPV ladies down at the park. Well, you need the Beta Flight Hive Backpack. Attaching a drone to the front of your backpack has never been easier. With this simple clip design, you can get ready to rock and roll in seconds. No radio case? No problem. With the Betaflight Hive backpack, you've got one built straight into the top of your FPV bag. And ladies down at the FPV park? No problem. But don't just take my word for it, let's check in with these pro pilot testimonials. I owe all my success to the Beta Flight backpack. I definitely wouldn't be able to build my van without it. When it comes to my biceps, bling, and my illegal bridge dives in Canada, nothing helps me more than this Beta Flight backpack. My skills have actually improved as a direct result of this bag. Is this, is this in focus? Oh, oh, oh no. Yeah. This Beta Flight backpack is totally rad. Help me rip grave guards like you wouldn't believe. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and look, no, no hard feelings against any of those guys. I'm massive fans of Bot Grinder, Matty Stun Steel. But today, you guys have obviously guessed it, you know, jokes aside, what we're going to be checking out is the Beta Flight backpack. Now, this backpack, it's absolutely packed full of features, but it's also pretty pricey. So, what we're going to be doing in this video, we're going to be sticking it on the bench, breaking it down, having a look at how it comes, and then I'm going to be going through my personal process of how I set mine up, how I'm going to be using mine each day, and we're also going to hand it over to Grumpy Trev and Crash Test Cal because they've had their bags for a little while, so we're going to find out how they set theirs up, what are the differences between their bags and my bags, you know, sort of the pros and cons, have a bit of discussion about some of the great features, some of the things we could maybe improve for next time, and there's right. a bit of a bonus too. I don't know how far we got into that, so you had to uh, watch some of my more parody uh, videos. <laughs> Alright, I'm back, and there's a lot of questions. Uh, camo, Corio man, Kent, uh, not complaining... But, oh, I missed your super chat. Was this about the 450 motors? Oh, sorry, brother. I'm back now. <laughs> uh, you said, uh, like you, Stu, changed my life. I've met so many good FPV pilots, but I would hardly go outside and socialize. Now it's every week racing. Thank you so much. I know what it's like. The I was, I'm not going to say antisocial, but I was more than content just sitting at home, playing video games. I played sport on the weekend or, you know, a couple of times a week when I was really into soccer. But that was about it. And I, ne I was never really passionate about it. It was just like something to do. And you had your workmates. But when you get FPV, I met friends that connected on like this. You know, when I think about people like Cal or Jono, Trev, Tony, I'm sure I'm going to be forgetting someone else, Granger those sorts of people when I'm flying around and even, even all the, all the people too, that uh, the UPE people, I give a big shout out to like just, and, and also online as well. Like this crazy amount of people you talk to on discord. It's, it really is life changing. Getting together, going out flying is, it's something special. And yeah, going out every week and look, you look at, and can someone please explain this to me? Why is it that you, you're stuck inside and you look out the window. It's like, man, look at this day. There is no wind. It is sunny. It is beautiful. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It is like the perfect temperature to go and fly. It is the perfect day. And you think, man, if I just had 10 packs now, it would be incredible. And then you can't wait. You charge up all your batteries at nighttime. You're like, I'm getting up tomorrow morning. We're going to go flying, boys. And you look at the weather forecast and it is just pouring down rain or the torrential. Uh, it's just heaps of wind. And I don't know what the deal is with that. So... Anyway, I, get, I digress. So, uh, yes, uh, I am so glad, uh, Corey, that I was able to help you get into this hobby. And, you know, FPV, it is so powerful. So thanks so much for that super chat, brother. I didn't miss it. I just ducked the loo for two seconds in this stream. And we have a lot of questions to get through as well. So keep them, keep them coming in. I'm going to try and uh, answer as many as I can. Uh, how often do I change props if they aren't broken but pretty mangled? Uh, so that's one's from KV, FPV, and when the I fly until my footage is unenjoyable. 
So if I really, if they're really manged, I'll try and bend them back and whatever. But look, if they're really, really garbage, then I don't know, I'll swap them out. But I would say most of the time I just bend it back and I'm definitely not one of those perfectionists. I, I don't want to waste that amount of money or plastic or resources just changing my props out for the perfect video or anything like that. It's just, for me, it's not worth it. I don't know. Some people are really pedantic about it and always have to have the best gear and no nicks and everything's polished and clean. That's not me, man. I just want to go out, fly and have fun and more time flying, less time changing props and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Calvin Twist is saying, why don't you use the Turnigy Evolution anymore? And the reason is because I started to get fail safes on that. So I used the Turnigy Evolution. I think it was from about 2017 to 2018. So definitely a huge chunk of time. I love how it fits in your hand. Uh, and that's kind of why I like the TBS Tango 2 right now as well, because it is just such a good fitting radio in the hand. But I was getting fail safes. After that 12 months, it did start to deteriorate in the range and reception and the link that I was getting. I just couldn't trust it anymore. There'd be many times I'm ripping around. I was really trying to push my lap times and go as fast as I could. And I was really into, I guess, gate flying and setting up a track, lap flying, and just screaming around, oh, fail safe it's gone it's crashed it's just it wasn't really worth it uh radio so i'm just scrolling through some of these sorry i had a few to few to catch up uh future fpv oh man i was waiting for you to take it out of the field for a test flight uh, why don't use the turnage evolution anymore Okay, Mr. Shady wants to know, what planes does Wingman Jono fly? So he flies the Zod HD Dart. Um, the I think he likes the Sonic AR Wing. He's got one of those. They're pretty good, pretty good, reliable little thing. I think he might even have the Tomahawk as well. He seems to fly a lot of the ones that uh, have been like, Jono, can you please fix this up with me? And he's better at wings anyway, so he's got a lot of, a lot of my wings. Got any quick tips? PID tips for tuning. Uh, went through six packs, nothing changed. So if you've changed your PIDs, Cody, uh, around six different times and it's still feeling the same, the chances are you probably got uh, a loose flight controller. Maybe a motor's loose. A frame arm is not tightened up. It, you've got bad props on there. Something is not right. If you're changing the PIDs and nothing's changed, it's definitely a problem with the drone itself, like the actual hardware the way it is configured, not the software in it. That's what that would be my guess anyway. Uh, Kryptonite wants to know, hey Stu, what happened to your Flywood Chaser 138? Did you fix it? Would you recommend it? You know what? Th that's the one that in my latest video that one of the motors died. And before, John, I didn't really wreck it, but before it fell out of the sky while he was flying it, it was a beautiful drone. It was probably one of the best ones I've ever flown in terms of the stability. It was great, but it did fall out of the sky. That motor did die. So you need, if you want to think about that as a recommendation, you need to take that into account. Yes, it flew great. Maybe I got unlucky. Maybe other reviewers had a great time with it, but that's what happened to mine. And would I recommend it based on that? Probably not. In my experience, I wouldn't go out and buy another one. I'd be worried that was going to happen. Uh, Ryu wants to know, does your wife FPV? So, no, she doesn't, but she has asked quite a few times, you know, when when can she go out and start learning to fly drones, all this sort of stuff. She's done a tiny bit of work on the sim. Um, it's just kind of tricky, I guess, with a toddler and, and a one-month-old baby. The amount of free time you get uh, for yourself is, uh, well, it's not existent, put it that way. Uh, is the Tyro 99 worth buying? Nope, not. I would not say so. Not at all. Not in today's market when we've got other drones and options. Is it night where we are? No, it's the middle of the day, actually. Uh, remember to keep tagging me in those, uh, in those questions. This makes it so much easier to read through. What do you think about the Korea Rear Motors Toa? That's from Jack Chapman. That's these motors here. I really like these motors. Uh, let me Google this for you. Uh, so, and Korea Rear really needs to fix their website up because uh, it's disgusting. I've got to say, 
Look at this. Who wants to read that? That's just hurting. That is hurting my eyes. But these Korea Rea motors, I think, are absolutely some of the most beautiful motors I have ever flown in terms of the tolerances on the motor itself. They just they felt great in the air. They seemed really reliable. They had heaps of performance and also fairly efficient as well. So I don't know. I don't know if anything's changed, and it's been about two years since I've flown these, but definitely pretty pretty baller motors. Um, let's have a look here. Radio. Oh, and someone is also asking about this is random. Someone's also asking about the Korea Rea Aero Blades. So they might be the props that have um, like some little slits in them. I've tried them out. Uh, they weren't weren't my favourite. What's the best prop to use with the Sam Gook Light Blue Motor? Dax is asking me. So this, here's a good one. So, so many people, this is one of the sticking points. It's not about getting the best. There's always going to be, there's, there's no jack of all trades that works well with everything. Um, you just, uh, sorry, there's no something that's going to be best across the board. Do you know what? Just get a bunch of cheap props that are robust. So some Dell Cyclones or something like that. You throw them on, you're still going to have a great time. If it's a higher KV pitch, a higher KV motor, maybe lower the pitch a little bit because otherwise you'll be drawing way too many amps. But just get whatever's cheap, whatever's easy to get postage and is accessible and uh, is a fairly reliable quad, so it's not going to break all the time. You don't. That's the beauty about these quads. I could throw a hundred different types of props on here, and I'm still going to have a relative still awesome flying experience. Some will be faster, some will be smoother, some will be better in turns, some will be... I don't know, whatever you want to come up with, but it's all still going to fly pretty, as an expression I like to realize, I say a lot, it's all pretty much for muchness. And I know a lot of reviewers and a lot of people who are just have one specific thing that they love to get into the nitty gritty pro pilot. Yeah, that's great. But look for the everyday pilot. It's fine. It's like saying to an F1 driver, what type of gloves should you use when you're driving in the car? Blah, blah, blah. They'll have all these different answers. If I said to you, Oh, mate, what uh, what gloves should you wear while you're driving? You know, I don't know. And let's say you had to wear gloves. Oh, I don't know, whatever. Just put something on your hands, go for a drive. Done. He's still asking, mainly for freestyle, not racing. Same answer, brother. All right. Mr. Shady's asking something about some old school RC channels. Brock to 50, I didn't watch that. Uh, what do you fly when you're not reviewing stuff? That's a good question. Um... It, it depends. If I'm out in the field and I'm reviewing a lot of analog quads, uh, I'll probably fly. I'll bring it along an analog rig, but most of the time I'll have like a DJI rig with like the Bang God or something, and I'll go for a fly with that. So that's probably what I'm flying at the moment. I really like flying around with the Bang God because it's just a great, reliable, fun craft that I don't have to worry about it crashing. It's uh, just it's robust so the only thing it has done is chewed up a 6s pack which i was a little bit upset about you know it got tangled in the props and the balance lead and it fell out of the sky uh all right what's my favorite fpv camera that's from jack shackford probably the Rattel, which is this one here who makes that is it cadex Yeah, I like this camera. Where is it? Oh, that's a Starlight. I don't know if that's that's probably not it. It's probably an older version somewhere, but yeah, it's a Cadex Rattel. It's a pretty baller little camera. I want to get a... This one's from Finn, FPV. So I want to get a smallish quad that I can get comfortable in real life flying outside. What do you recommend? Something that isn't likely to break. Okay, we want to get this bad boy right here which is the tadpole uh, armaton this one here they might even do a bind and fly on their website so if you have a look at this one it's a really really fun little ripper that you can take outside you know you can actually add all these different parts in here if you want to put the motors on here, <clears throat> your ESCs, all that sort of stuff. And I don't know if do they build it for you. Receiver. 
And I've got to give a shout out too to the Armiton. Oh, and it's got a warranty on the frame. And I've got to give a shout out to the guys over at Armiton because they make some of the best stuff in the biz. Their frames are reliable. They've been in here from the start, from like 2014, 2013, maybe even. Maybe they've been doing drones and quad frames for a long time. The dude, Chris, who runs it is absolutely top notch. He stands for the pilots. He doesn't do any shady business practices. He doesn't just try to, I, I don't know, like, Make, he only makes products that he believes in. He doesn't just do little incremental steps and say this one, this one, this one. He makes some amazing stuff, and he's yeah. Just I know personally, a lot of people have re reclaimed their frame when it's broken. It costs them like five bucks to get a new one. Just there is a reason why people talk about Armiton so much. It's because it's an amazing company who makes amazing products run by amazing people. Uh, sponsored by Armiton. Not, not that, and that's that's not sponsored. That's just how I feel about that company. I'm sure a lot of people in the chat would say that as well. Uh, Dax wants to know again, what's the, my thoughts on using GPS return to home, or would I advise a GPS? No, nah, if you've got a racing drone, you don't need GPS in there. It's just asking for another thing to break. That's not what these crafts are about. You shouldn't be getting into situations that far away where you need return to home if you're using this. And, you know, if it's if it's out of control, just let it crash. They're super robust. Just let it fall into the ground. If you're using GPS, just ask, throwing in so many more problems. You've got to think about mounting a little GPS antenna. It's just totally not worth it, in my opinion. Um, what do we got here? Jack Chapman. Analog or digital for going cheap but want a good experience. Well, okay. So Jack, you're asking, do you want, should I go analog or digital? But I also want to, you know, I want to do FPV cheap. That's like saying, oh, I want to be, I want to go really fast. Uh, should I buy a push bike or a Ferrari? But I want to go cheap. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't work that way. Those things are mutually exclusive. You want a good quality? Uh, go digital. You want to go cheap? Go go analog. Um, Future FPV, I gotta say, I really enjoy your name. Um, do you ever just fly, mess around, or do you only go out to race, review products? Uh, what I tend to do, I have so much work when it comes, people don't realize how much work it actually takes to make, if, unless you've sat down and tried to edit a video yourself, and then when you realize doing roof cam, uh, face cam, in the field cam, reviewing other people, putting your fly footage together, editing that in, writing descriptions, thumbnails, like YouTube videos, uh, it's about an hour's, work per minute of video that you watch i think when we're trying to break it down and look at it when i so when i go out to the field i really make sure that i do all my work first because i try to condense it all into the like say you get out once a week you get all those shots in there that you need to do and then if there is time at the end of the day then we'll fly around and mess around because when it's your full-time job i would love to get out and fly just for fun a lot more but when it is your job and you've got videos to make and you know, it's, it's your livelihood for your family. And this is a good segue to say shout out to any of my Patreon supporters. If you support the channel, I could not do this content without you. I could not share this message of FPV. And if you do want to sign up for anybody watching, the link is in the description. But after I do all my flying out in the field, if there's time left, that's when I'll start uh, flying around for fun. And it is important to still get out and fly for fun and all that sort of stuff. But I always make sure I don't have the option, especially when I'm with the boys, I need to get those flying... Uh, I need to film these reviews first. So that's what comes first. And that's just one of the, uh, the, it's not a, not a negative, but like any, any time when your hobby becomes your job there and you can just, you can't just fly for fun all the time. You do need to focus on doing some other, other things first. So I don't know, but, but really good question. All right. Uh, Kevin Bryant, do you still like the DJI HD system? Is it worth the one K? Um, yep. I would say, do I? Yeah, it, it's it's pretty nice. I still, it's my personal choice if I go out to fly it. Um, radio. Oh, we've got Raven in the chat here as well, somewhere I think. Uh, do I ever go fly around? Armiton's customer ser customer service is awesome as well. Someone else was thinking about getting a tadpole. That's from Cody. Yep, it is. A, it's an awesome little frame. Let's have a look what else they've got. I wonder if they do binder flies on here. So custom built models. And I'm going to say they will be pricier because it's not just some place in America that's uh, America. It's not just some factory in China where they're just soldering hundreds and hundreds of drones together. These really are 
uh, a group of professional builders that build a drone. Like if, if I was going to build one myself, that's, that'd be the same quality. These people love doing what they do. So let's have a look. If they've got a little tadpole or something. What's this? Gecko. There's the little Gecko 4. All right. Don't get the Japalura. I'm going to say that's a little bit old now for what it is. Oh. oh, it's right on the first page. What's going on here? Here we go. 200 bucks. Awesome little tadpole you can rip around, fly, have fun with. Looks like they've even upgraded the motors since I last reviewed mine. So, and it put it with a receiver. Let's go. Crossfire receiver. $235 with a Crossfire receiver would be absolute gold. I would enjoy flying this thing around. So if you want to get a toothpick. Uh, Dax, what method do you have for draining batteries to use in a parallel board? Do you use a 12-volt light bulb or anything like that? You know what? I actually have a whole bunch of little... They were from Race Day Quads. Uh, let's have a look here. Race Day Quads. I think they were called the lipo suction battery discharger lipo suck these things oh look at it look at this fantastic video they've got in their home page well done race day quads but yeah you just plug this into the end and it'll just drain it down to uh your correct voltage to so buy a couple of them and then bob's your uncle it's all done uh oh hey ben uh the gecko rips yes gecko has a uh ben has a gecko i've seen that in the flesh except he lost some camera mounts in it when we're flying around um love your videos this is from one and one nzd one new zealand dollar uh what's your thoughts around uh, remote pilots licenses uh I don't know, it's different around, all different regulations around the world. I think we're just going to wait and see what happens in the US with all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, stupid question from Connor Gavis. Stupid Q, but what prop tool would I need for the Emacs Hawk 5? So, same prop tool as all the others. Uh, you can just get, I think it's, what, M5? I'm 99% sure of it. You can correct me in the comments, but just like a little M5 or a shifter. It's literally just a little... Uh, this isn't going to come off. Because, oh, there we go. It's just a little bolt, a little lock nut that you use. You could even use a pair of pliers. It's not, I don't know if that's going to show up too well. Especially, hang on, let me put this on face cam. So this is, you just get like, you could put a little shifter or something around that to, to take that off. Pair of pliers. All right. Uh, no worries, Dax. I'm glad you're enjoying the uh, the chat here. Alrighty, I think we might be uh, wrapping this up in a little bit. Started streaming 99 minutes ago. That's uh, kind of not ironic, but apt that we got there for the UAV Futures 99. I'm hope hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'd love to know too what you thought about these streams. Uh, huge shout out to anybody who is a patron of mine. Huge shout out to you viewers as well. But I talk about Patreon so much because I couldn't do this without your support. So thank you so much. Also, all those people who ask questions, huge shout out too to the people who put down a super chat. Even you might think it's one or two dollars, it does make a huge difference, uh, especially when you look at how YouTube's going. And at the moment, it's really hard to get outside and do some work as well, trying to do flying, trying to do these flight reviews. Like I have this bad boy right here, which you got to admit, this this is a sexy, sexy looking drone. It has a really cool canopy on the top. There's going to be some more stuff coming up about this, and I want Granger to be ripping this around, but I'm not allowed to go and uh, meet people out of my immediate family. I can't go see Granger and say, hey, test this out. It is, I'll get like a $1,000 fine if they catch me out. So thank you so much for all those people who watch the channel, but also the people who financially support me, because at the moment, when you're stuck indoors, uh, you guys really are the lifeline. So I don't know. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Oh, we still got some questions coming in. On that, subscribe for more FPV-related content, I think. I'm about to uh, end the stream in a little bit, but I just shouldn't double check. There's no last questions here. I love you guys all. Stay safe. Um, yeah, thinking of all you all, and especially the people in the US and uh, over in Europe, I 
wish you all the best with what's happening in the world and hopefully some things can start to look better. Anyway, and maybe I'll see you on Velocidrone or some of those sims as well. So I should also post the Discord link. That's what I meant to do at the start of this video. I'm going to blame, uh, we'll get Raven FPV in here and say, hey, Raven, that, that can be your job, bro, just to spam that spam that Discord link. Anyway, uh, subscribe for more FPV shenanigans. Go watch uh, that latest video about cleaning stuff if you haven't seen it, because you will enjoy it on my channel. If you're in for a mood for a good laugh, and as always, happy, happy flying.